Hello YouTube, welcome back. This is part two of forging a first model brown bess bayonet. So in this episode we're going to start forging out the blade. Uh, now this is going to be quite a chunky forging uh, because I will be doing a lot of grinding afterwards. So like we spoke about in the last episode, the blade is a triangular section with a double follow down to the point and a roundish collar at the top. So we're going to be forging this out of a piece of inch square carbon steel. Uh, now this is quite an old piece of carbon steel, it is probably uh, around 100 years old. And I am going to start by forging out a 14 inch taper on the end. Now I'm doing this onto the power hammer because it's quite tough stock. Uh, if you are doing this by hand, enjoy. So I am starting by putting a point on the end and then I will draw the taper back from the 14 inch mark until I have the length that I want. I'm going quite carefully at this, I'm rotating it constantly uh, and that is to get a nice even square that hasn't shifted to the diamond. And then once the taper is drawn out, I will take my power hammer flatter, which is just a piece of D-section handrail with a handle welded to it. And without putting too much pressure on it, I will just remove any power hammer marks. Now the power hammer marks weren't particularly deep on this uh, because it is quite a long taper, so it wasn't given much opportunity to dig into the metal. Uh, but the flatter just finishes it off and gives you a nice smooth flat surface. So with the taper drawn and flattened I will just give everything a final straighten. I'm using my broad faced hammer for this so that I don't leave any hammer marks again. I'm making sure that the hammer lands nice and plumb to the metal. And here we have our 14 inch taper. Now just to note the blade itself is going to be 16 and a half inches long uh, but with 14 inches I know that it will stretch to the 16 and a half inches. So up to 14 inches and I will, using an inch round swage, I will start flattening out the bottom and rounding off the top of the blade. I'll just help that along by going onto the flat of the anvil, just knocking off any corners. So, like I mentioned before, there is a double fuller going down the blade, so at this stage I will start roughing that out. Now, in all likelihood, this was actually ground into the originals, uh, rather than forged in like I'm doing, but I will find it easier to use the double fuller tool that we made in the last episode. Uh, partly because it gives me a guide for grinding afterwards, and partly because it helps turn the square section into a triangular section. Uh, and that is because it is flattening the bottom whilst fullering the top. And here we have the double fuller. So it's quite rough at the moment, that really doesn't matter uh, because we are going to do a bit more forging to it and then put the fullers back in afterwards. So I am just carrying on triangulating the square section now and I'm leading it down to the fullered area of the blade. I'm using a heavy hammer and I'm putting in quite heavy blows. Um, and the trick is to save time is to not try and take it all the way down to round um, in one go. You want to just start it off in the swage and then start triangulating it on the flat face like so and it'll go a lot quicker. So if you have a cutting face on the anvil you can also use that. Uh, the key is to wedge the blade and you can see I'm just forging this to triangular now coming in at an angle and just getting those edges to come down flush with the bottom like so and I'm doing this probably to about 12 inches from the point of the blade uh, because I do need that round collar at the top, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave an extended round section at the top of the blade 
uh, and then I will grind the triangular section into that last bit and that will just ensure that I have the rounded collar at the top. So you can see I am forging down along the fullered section as well uh, and that is to just get an even shape to the triangular section of the blade. At this stage it doesn't matter if I move the fullers around too much because I will then go back and put them back in like so. Now I'm doing this at not too high a heat, uh, I don't want to move too much metal, I just want to ensure crispness in these fullers. So for those of you who are doing this by hand, uh, I would just say grind these fullers in, if you don't have the benefit of a power hammer. And then what I will do is I will just come in with the flatter again and I will just carry on defining the edges of the blade. And this will also square them up as well and make sure that I have a nice chunk of material to grind into when I do get to the grinding stage. The final the width I'm looking for at the rounded collar is uh, about inch and a quarter inch and a quarter wide. So with all that done you can say I ended up with a bit of a kink in here so with a hide mallet I will just de-kink that and in order to straighten it I'm using the bend the bridge method which involves hitting on the high spot and the hide mallet just prevents me from causing too much damage to the forge work. So with the blade mostly roughed out I will then take my cross peen and I will carry on spreading where the rounded collar will be uh, and that is just to attain the final width of inch and a quarter. I think I took it to inch and three eighths and that will give me a bit of material for grinding. The key to making things like this uh, where you know you're going to be grinding anyway is to forge it thick, grind it thin and then you know that if you've got some wobbly areas or anything you can just go in with the grinder and clean up those lines. And then with the hide mallet I will just give it a little bit more of a straighten. Just ensure that my lines are quite straight and again that will save me some grinding time later. So at this stage I will actually measure 17 and a half inches uh, because I've got a little bit of a carp's mouth on the point so I will cut that back later so I'll give myself some more time and then I'll put a second mark at an inch and a half further back and that will be to draw out the rounded tang. So I'll cut that off and then under the power hammer do a double set down and this will be the rounded tang for the bayonet. So I'm, at this stage I'm just drawing it out at the thickness of the blade. And I will actually leave a square transition between the blade and the rounded tang of the bayonet uh, and I will then grind that back later. So at this stage I'm just drawing it out, drawing it out as far as I can uh, as, a square, as a square section at the moment and then I will take it to octagonal then decahexagonal which is basically 16 faces uh, and that will rough it out, that is about half inch round at the moment but then using a spring fuller I will take it to the final 3 eighths section. Uh, and I actually left it ever so slightly above 3 eighths uh, because I will do some draw filing on it later. Uh, so you want a little bit of thickness so that when you do shine it up with a file afterwards uh, you are taking it down to 3 eighths. And obviously I'm doing it over long and then I will cut it down to size uh, later when it comes to scarf welding it to the socket of the bayonet. 
So do a pass at a low temperature afterwards and that will give you a nice smooth section. And there we have it. So as you can see the tang is nice and round and smooth and I have left a square section between the bayonet and the tang and that can be filed down later. So it's not quite straight, that doesn't matter, it's slightly oversized so I can grind it straight. Uh, triangular sections come out nice, got nice flat edges uh, for grinding and a nice rounded section which will be ground down to make the top colour. So the follower's coming out nice as well. And there we go. So thanks for watching. And as usual, here is the list of fine ladies and gentlemen who are supporting this channel via Patreon. Thanks a lot, guys. And I will see you all on the next episode next week.